Hello hackers, welcome to Phone College. I'm Jan and in this video we're going to be talking about memory errors, specifically a very simple type of memory error, kind of the, the, the classic stack overflow. Um, we're going to talk about smashing the stack. Uh, let's start with a simple example. This will be the example of the video. Um, let's say we have a, a program and the program takes input from the user on the command line as a command line argument. That's right here, right? Um, and it passes it into this print quoted function. And the print quoted function prints out a quoted version of the string. What does the quoted version of the string look like? We have um, this uh, quote function that has an output buffer and it uses sprintf to fill uh, the output buffer with a version of the string that we passed in surrounded by quotes, right? Um, this program has a number of bugs in it. And in this video, we're going to talk about the stack overflow that's present in this program. Um, and the stack overflow occurs in this sprintf. This sprintf is uh, unsafe. It has no way of understanding how big the buffer is. And so there are problems. Um, and of course, the user input is not limited. So let, let's see what happens when a malicious user passes in a very long argument into argv1, a very long string. Um, what happens, of course, when sprint when sprintf runs, it allocates some space on the stack, creates its uh, metadata um, or whatever local data that it, it needs to have. Um, and when it launches, there's this return address that is pushed. And the return address says, when you return from sprintf, go to this line 14 in the code. Of course, we're looking at source code. In reality, this will be binary. Um, then sprintf writes one quote, then the input, and then another quote onto the stack, onto specifically where this um, output buffer was. And the output buffer was in the stack frame of the quote function. And when the um, output buffer is filled, because there is no limit on the size of a command line argument, or I mean, there is, but it's like 65 kilobytes, um, uh, there, the entire output buffer, which was only 16 bytes long, is completely filled up. And if you notice, when you pass in this output into sprintf, all that it takes is a character pointer. Let's take a look on the command line here. Man sprintf. sprintf takes a character pointer for its output um, buffer. It has no way of knowing the size of that character of buffer. And so it has no choice without any additional information provided to it. And of course, in a well-formed program, you could put a size limit here, for example, or you could use a more safe function such as snprintf. Um, it has no choice but to copy the whole string. And of course, if the whole string is too long, it'll overflow. And what was over here? Over here used to be the return address from quote, which said when quote returns, go to line nine, or in the source code and print quote or whatever binary um, instruction corresponded to that. So what, happened is, what happens is the attacker input overwrites everything, writes over the buffer and writes over that return address. Then when um, that return address, when the return from the function happens, um, there are bad effects. So um, what went wrong here, right? two things went wrong. One is a kind of lazy um, programming practice. Uh, it's very easy to screw up a call to sprintf and uh, cause your um, stack to get overflowed and bad things to happen. Uh, the, but there's a more subtle problem. The more subtle problem is in this program, there were um, pointers being passed around to variable size data structures without the size also being passed around. If instead of a character array, uh, instead of a character pointer of output being passed in uh, alone with no size information, if instead 
the program used something like SNPrintf. Let's take a look at our man pages again. SNPrintf takes the character um, uh, pointer, the, the character buffer pointer, and a size, right? If this was used and the size was passed in, this bug could have been avoided. Unfortunately, oftentimes in C, because there is no implicit metadata to anything, you see a lot of um, these sorts of uh, memory errors leading to uh, buffer overflows in real code. Um, all right, so let's um, say, uh, what can you do with this memory corruption, right? Let's ask this for ourselves. Well, you can do a lot of stuff, right? You could, of course, override memory that doesn't influence anything. There's plenty of memory uh, padding on the stack, etc. That's boring, right? But then there are a couple of uh, more interesting uh, things that you can do with a, a uh, stack overflow, um, like we were discussing, right? You could um, overwrite some other memory on the stack other local variables, for example, in that same function that um, are used to uh, influence some mathematical operations, some conditional jumps, etc. Right? Um, you might remember the win. Um, well, I guess you wouldn't won't have seen that yet in your the, the challenge problems for this uh, module, you'll see these sort of uh, variables that you can overwrite and influence. You could also overwrite some memory that is used as a read pointer or an offset of a read pointer that'll uh, allow you to force the program to access some memory that it wasn't supposed to. All right. You could do the same for a write pointer, allowing for what is called an arbitrary uh, write or a memory overwrite vulnerability. And you can use um, something uh, similar but even more brutal which is overriding a code pointer, a pointer that the program will later use to, to transfer control flow. Um, for example, the return address that we saw being overwritten in the example. This is um, called a control flow hijack uh, exploit. And um, it's a very, very powerful type of exploit because you uh, take control of the program. Um, typically, of course, you might be able to do multiples of these effects by either triggering the same bug multiple times or, uh, uh, you know, the, the overriding multiple different things that are used in sequence, for example. Um, but of course, the ultimate power and, and what we'll focus on, and especially the later parts of the homework, um, is return pointer overriding. You overflow a stack buffer to override the return address. And there's all sorts of complications. And, and in, in many, many cases, this is now obsolete, but we'll um, roll into that uh, in this module. Um, other things you could do that are very interesting, right? You can um, jump not just to a different function you, in, in your return pointer override, you can jump to any instruction. Um, this is a very powerful uh, capability and you can, actually chain functionality. We'll uh, dive into this at extreme depth in the next module, actually, in return-oriented programming. And you can jump between instructions as well. This is also a very interesting um, sort of uh, capability, especially on um, x86 and AMD64. Uh, and we'll explore these three concepts in the next module. But for now, let's look back at our example and consider overriding the return address to point to some other function. Um, and specifically, here if we have our attack where we override the return address, we could override it with a return address that we control. And specifically, if there's, for example, a win function or whatever, a function that um, executes arbitrary commands that is a, a very desirable function to jump to in the code, we can override the return address with the location of that function. And then when quote returns, we will uh, execute the function that we want to execute. Let's take a quick look um, at the terminal, how this actually works in practice. Actually, first let's look on binary ninja. So um, I compiled this program. Um, here is main which of course calls print quoted, print quoted calls quote, quote calls uh, sprintf, and then returns, 
right? All right, let's uh, jump to the terminal and we will GDB um, this. So this is GDB with split mind and stuff. You can, of course, um, set it up or use the Pwn College infrastructure, which has um, this available to you um, um, kind of preset up. So let's break at the quote function and then run with a normal um, um, a normal, what's it called? Normal uh, input, sorry, uh, my mind went blank. So we broke at quote um, and you can see on the um, stack here, actually let's, let's step through the stack setup. Okay. Now we should have the stack all set up. If we look at RSP, we have uh, nothing in RSP yet or nothing on, on our stack. We, we, this should be where we um, write the quoted version of our input, which was, um, if I remember correctly, hello as the first argument. So if we go um, next instruction, all right, so now we're about to execute sprintf with a format string of quote, percent s quote, and the argument hello, all right? Here is uh, our stack buffer before. What the heck? Um, are we, where are we right now? I oh, should, this should be correct. Why is it at, oh, well, uh, it might just not be at the top of the, uh, so seemingly it is at RDI. Okay, so here's our uh, hello. Ah, it is RSP plus 10 for some reason. Maybe there was padding, OX10. So here's our string hello, right? Quoted nicely. And if we look at, uh, if we go to next instruction, we're about to uh, return. Here is at C28, so hex uh, 1 8 away from hello is the return address that we're about to return to. You can see this backtrace right here. So we're about to go from quote to print quoted, and we're back in print quoted, and we can continue onwards. It looks like something is uh, broken and we don't see the output. That's okay. All right. So that's basically um, um, how the program is supposed to work. But let's see what happens when a malicious attacker ourselves instead sends a very long string. All right. Okay. So now we're back at quote. Here we are. So let's just step through until we call sprintf. Okay, so here we go. We're about to call sprintf with our um, buffer address with uh, uh, the percent s, uh, quote percent s quote format and with our very large string now. So let's take a look real quick first here is this this buffer right so if we see where rsp is this is rsp this is where we're going to write stuff so we go from bb0 to bc0 so as before we were ox10 away and where's our return address our return address um resides at RBP plus eight. So our, if you recall our discussion of the stack, RBP points to the right side of the stack, um, the kind of uh, where right before the return address or so RBP plus eight, just one for the right. That is the return value. Uh, and that of course points us to print quoted 
plus 28 here. Um, we'll return back into print quoted. All right. If we step over this, you're about to see a couple of things change. The immediate thing is going to be this backtrace will go completely nuts because the entire, well, not the entire stack, but a whole lot of the stack was overwritten with A's, which is in, in ASCII hex 41. So if you look at the return address now, it's hex 41. Um, that's pretty bad news because if we keep stepping, so now we're, we're stepping to the stack cleanup, we're stepping through the return and we crash. Why do we crash? Because we try to return, of course, return pops the return address of the stack and goes there and the return address is all A's. So that's pretty bad news, obviously. Uh, for all A's, it the program just crashes, but if we had a win function, we could carefully craft our input so that instead of all A's, it contained the address of the win function. Awesome. So this is the kind of the simplest uh, stack overflow um, example, or not quite the simplest, but you know, a simple one. Um, in the rest of the module, we'll go into other uh, memory errors that can occur, and then uh, the mitigations that are supposed to protect against their exploitation. Thanks for watching.